Hey everyone, Benji and Igor here at the Contractor Evolution Studio. Brand has never mattered more than it does right now. People, the public, your customers are busier than ever. Not only that, but the competition for their eyeballs, their attention, has also never been fiercer, right? Between social media algorithms, shrinking attention spans, and an ever-expanding marketplace, it can feel daunting for you, the small business owner, to stand out and be remembered. So there's a reason why, let's say 1-800-GOT-JUNK, for example, can charge $1,000 to haul a load of junk when no one else can. Mm -hmm. It's the same reason why you will happily spend 90 bucks on a t-shirt at Lululemon, or why people literally stand in a lineup after making a reservation to spend $4,000 on a simple laptop at Apple. Uh, they know, they like, and they trust the brand. Now, being the next Lululemon may not be your goal, and it, it actually probably shouldn't be, but if you look within your own industry, right, whether you're a landscaper, painter, builder, you're a roofer, maybe a subtrade, there are numerous brands that carry mass influence. And if they've created it, you can too. The other thing is if you're serious about creating a lasting business, this is something you actually have to do. It's important to look at your brand as a foundation that you build your organization on top of. It's an investment worth adding to, uh, and a great brand will always pay back in dividends over the course of your career. So to explain the importance of branding and this whole process of creating great brands in our contracting industry, we're joined today by the very best that we know of, Noel Fox from Freebird Agency. Now, having worked with Noel personally for many years, both on creating the Breakthrough Academy brand as well as your favorite show, Contract Revolution, I can promise you that he's the real deal. Brian Scudamore, even the founder of 1-800-GOT-JUNK, will tell you that Noel is his number one go-to when it comes to bringing an impactful brand to life. Noel and Freebird Agency, they've created many industry-leading brands for companies such as You Move Me, Wow One Day Painting, and they've been a massive part of the brand development of 1-800-GOT-JUNK and even those famous Lululemon bags that you see on every street around the world. So on today's show, we get into how it feels as an entrepreneur to truly have brand traction. Uh, we get into Noel's brand building process and cover the concrete steps he's followed to build the many epic home services brands that he has. And then he sheds light on the crucial no-nos that he sees a lot of contractor contracting companies make when it comes to building their own brands. So let's find out how much brand really matters with Noel Fox. You're watching Contractor Evolution, where we unpack the systems, tactics, and skills you need to take your fast-growing contracting business to the next level. You're here to learn what it takes to scale up, work less, and increase profitability. You've come to the right place. Stay tuned to learn what separates the new breed of contractor from the old school and welcome to your ultimate guide on the business of contracting. Noel, good to have you here, man. Oh, I'm so stoked, Benji. Yeah, us too. Awesome. We're excited to have you. Um, so, Noel, I want to open with this uh, very simple first question. Uh, what is brand in your eyes uh, and why is it so fundamental to the basic building blocks of a really successful organization? Yeah, today brand is so important you know, I think when we were kids, you'd have a pair of rugby pants and nobody knew the name and it didn't really make a difference. But now everything mm -hmm. is branded totally. and the brands that you trust are the ones that really rise to the top. So you need a brand that really makes a strong emotional connection with somebody. Mm -hmm. And the, the stronger that connection is, the more powerful the brand. Totally with with the consumer, like you're you're not with you and your team necessarily yeah. in the way that the consumer sees it, right? Very much so. And you have to love it as well. It has to be that kind of that that middle ground where the ideal target market has a really strong emotional connection to it. Like when we design a new brand, when when they see the brand, when someone sees the brand for the first time, mm -hmm. the goal is, hey, I know this brand. Or maybe I don't know the brand. But I've, I, there's something about it that I trust. They recognize it on some level intuitively. Totally. Yeah. So yeah. When, yeah. When, when, when you think back to it, let's kind of rewind the tape a little bit. Uh, in the case of, of the development of a lot of the Lulu, Lululemon assets, brand assets, what separated those from the many, many other yoga companies? Yeah, I think the difference was on day one, Chip told me that he wanted to be as big as Nike. Mm -hmm. So when we were creating the look and the feel of all the market materials and all the, the various print materials, 
we weren't thinking about creating a brand that was a yoga brand. We were thinking about creating a brand that was going to be as big as Nike. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, interesting. So the, the, yeah, like you have to think about these long-term goals right away. Yeah. yeah. Um, so th tell me this, what are contractors and, and businesses in general, but let's, let's kind of focus specifically on the contractor. What do they typically not understand about brand or what do they commonly get wrong? I think that they don't understand the importance of a brand. Mm -hmm. So totally. they buy into specific brands. There's, there's, yeah. you know, they have their coffee brand, their beer brand, oh, their picky. truck brand, totally. their boot brand. They, you know, there's certain tribes that they buy into but when it comes to their own brand, they don't always realize that their customers also feel the same way. Right. Understood. Yeah, totally. Um, speaking of the customer, one thing I commonly see is that they don't really consider the needs of the customer um, and and what their kind of buying journey looks like. It's much more about, you know, what they, what the contractor wants it to be and what they think is important. What's your take on that? Like as you're building brands, um, how do you kind of put emphasis onto what the customer is thinking and feeling and, and what they want? That, that's just quite a common thing that I see that, that the, the buyer's perspective on it isn't considered. Yeah. So whenever we're working with a client, we're always thinking about who is their ideal target market. Right. So usually it's the end consumer yeah and the ideal target market's the consumer that's you know they're the best one to work with they don't nickel and dime they're you know maybe they're a upper middle class female who's 47 years old and we really pinpoint it and we mm -hmm. want to create a brand that really resonates with that person in a mm -hmm. really strong strong way totally and then often there's a secondary one as well these days finding right employees or really talented workforce yeah. is important so creating a brand that's going to resonate there as well is super right important. I, I think too if i can just add like it like just to sum up what what we're saying here is like a, a it seems to me like a lot of contractors don't understand that their brand is not about them 100 percent. it's not about them so what you'll see is um, you know, somebody's really into hunting and so they make a, you know, a, a logo that has a buck in it and there's some guns involved and it's like very, very <laughs> like, you know, we see these trucks, it's like very macho and it's very like, okay, this is cool to you, but it's not about you, but it's not about you. And like, you know, Mrs. Johnson who wants to get her ch kitchen renovated and, and really wants you to take care of the interior of her home. And she wants to feel a certain way through the experience that means nothing to her. And in fact, it's, it's, it actually means something maybe negative or something that you don't want. So, so I think, I think that's a piece that a lot of people mm -hmm. are, are somewhat, um, lost on. It's just a reminder. Like it's, it's absolutely not about them. It's about the customer and what they want and how they want to feel when they interact with the company. Totally. Uh, one of the, the most impactful and powerful books I've ever read on this subject is called buyer personas by Adele Ravella. And, and it's so interesting to open your eyes to what is the buyer's journey mentally that they go through when they decide who they're going to use mm -hmm. to change their roof, to renovate their kitchen, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, that, that is the fundamental principle is it's not about you. It's about the consumer, your prospect and what they're looking for and how they go through their journey from initial, like, hey, I think we need a kitchen to actually deciding who they're going to go with. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so no, you've, um, you know, you've, you've built out some, some big ones, Lululemon, the whole Odoe sort of umbrella. We've got, you move me. Wow. One day, uh, 1-800, of course, like from your experience working with these brands, with these entrepreneurs, can you, can you describe what it feels like to have like true brand traction? Like what, what is that? What's the experience like for the entrepreneur, for the people that work for that business when they have real brand traction? Yeah, so we do a lot of work with Brian Scudamore and the O2E brands, family of brands. So Shack Shine is I've got a great example there. When we first rebranded or started to rebrand Shack Shine, one of their, their main guys was like, no, my team only wears black. We're like super cool. Like mm -hmm. they work for us because we're this cool brand. And like, no, no, give us a chance. We're going to try this. A bit, of a, a bit of a happy logo. We're going to wear blue jackets and black jeans or black pants, and he was pretty hesitant, but then eventually he's like, okay, I'll, we'll give it a shot. And I was talking to one of their employees shortly after the rebrand. He's like, yeah, I went and knocked on someone's door and it opened a crack, and then they saw the van, and then they saw me with my uniform, and they opened up the door and invited me in for tea. He says, that's never happened before. Like, this is usually they open it up a little bit, and I'm there in my black, and it's like not very personal or touchy. Yeah. And now it's like, 
a they warm roll, welcome. Yeah, the warm welcome. Yeah. And they roll up and the neighbors see it. And like, oh, that's interesting. What's going on there? And then the neighbors mm-hmm. end up being business as well. Mm-hmm. It's it's So it's a lot more than like a logo and a website. This is There's a feeling to it. You, you use the word emotional connection. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're really looking to understand our ideal target market and what brands do they buy into? Right. Why do they buy into those brands? How do they like to be spoken to? And then how does that relate to who we are as a company? So what's our tone of voice? Um, how are we as a personality? And then you kind of blend those two together. And the ideal is, you know, they see the brand for the first time. They're like, man, I, I love this company. There's totally. something about it that I trust. Totally. And I want to invite them into my house. Versus, mm-hmm. like you said, the guy with the tribal tattoos and the lifted truck and the tribal tattoos are fine but when the tribal tattoos go on the side yeah. of the truck and they show up at my mom's house my mom's like oh man are these guys gonna be in my house like seriously? gunmetal contracting yeah, and there's exactly. rifles on the side or there's flames going down the like yeah. that that's this is the stuff these are the no-nos which i think we're gonna we're gonna get to later totally um let me ask you this Noel. other than being really recognizable by the consumer like your, your target uh your target audience are there other benefits to building a really powerful brand yeah, I think it's it's when you have a powerful brand, people usually shop around these days. Maybe they'll mm-hmm. look for three different companies to work with. If your brand is the most trustworthy, uh, there's a better chance that you're going to kind of rise to the top out of out of the competition. Um, you'll be more memorable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people, you'll be more top of mind. Like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, I saw this company that does painting, and I'll use these guys because I remember their their brand was fun and cool, and they looked trustworthy the value of the brand rises hundred percent. Yeah. That, that, that's definitely an interesting one. I, I I do think about that sometimes like from an investment perspective, I think a lot of entrepreneurs necessarily don't think about this, but you know, for listeners that are looking at this right now, ask yourself like what brand are you investing in? Because you're constantly investing into it, right? There's, there's, uh, you know, very obvious things like you're wrapping your trucks or your vans. You know, I'd love you say this, like it costs the same amount to wrap, a shitty rap as a really amazing rap, right? Um, but you're 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 wrapping trucks. You're investing in in Google ads or Facebook ads or whatever it might be. You're going to trade shows. All of these activities that you do, whenever the brand is in the public eye, you're investing into something. And it's like, are you investing into a great stock or are you investing into a shitty stock? Mm-hmm. Right? Brand is the same way, right? So th- that the actual development of a brand of a great brand allows you. Uh, you're going to do all this marketing, public-facing activity anyways. Yeah. Invest in a good one. Yeah. Well, but to your point about like valuation, like there's a long-term play here as well. Like a lot of our members, a lot of our listeners the, the, are thinking about one day I'm going to sell, I'm going to sell my business, hopefully for a lot of money. And, and, and this, this piece is a huge, huge, huge part of that. When you want to take this company to market, one of the things a buyer is going to look for, or your, you know, a broker is going to, is going to look at is, how strong is the brand? Do people know who you are? Is it recognizable? Do they have an emotional connection? So yeah, and totally. that's a huge me, one. People always ask me, it's like, when should I rebrand? Mm-hmm. I'm like, yesterday. Totally. Every time you wrap a new vehicle or put up a new ad or... Go to a trade show. Go to a or trade show. Or print if, some flyers. If, if, it's, if it's not on mark, you're missing out business over time. What, what impact have you seen brand have on something like hiring? Like it, does it, like we're talking, a lot of people think about this from a, okay, customers recognize me and maybe the f- phone rings a bit more and it, we look good publicly. What impact does that have on your ability to attract like the best quality people in the marketplace? Yeah, and this is such an interesting question because it, if you have a brand that attracts the best customer, so say the customer is, the one that's easiest to work with, happy to pay, never nickels and dimes. If your brand is the, is designed to really attract that person, mm-hmm. you can get more of those clients and get less of the deadwood. Mm-hmm. With employees, it's the same thing. You know, finding skilled employees is so tricky these days. And if you have a brand that, you know, they're going to put on the jacket, put on the hat, and you want a sense of pride and you want to be able to present yourself in a really professional way. Like mm-hmm. these are often, you know, Young guys have aspirations to either be, grow within your company or to become something themselves. Mm-hmm. And they're going to come and work with you if you have a brand that's really lock solid and tight. And it's something that they're like, yeah, this is cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you this from, from firsthand experience, right? So I, um, I obviously see a lot of really high performers get hired over the last couple of years in our organization. And um, 
one of the things that happens almost without exception every single time. So after the initial discovery call, before they get set up with me on the first round of interviews, um, our, our team has them review our brand strategy. Remember that we built, that, that Freebird had built for, for Breakthrough Academy. And without fail, I always get comments on that as they sort of stroll through. And it's pretty robust. It's like a 30-page brand strategy. And, and, and we have them look at it every single time. And, and I constantly get like, I've read it. And I, that, that really clinched it for me. I knew you guys were pretty cool. But when I read that, that spoke to me. The hmm. values, the tone of voice, the brand persona, uh, all that stuff. Uh, I get that all the time. And, and, and I know we didn't necessarily build that brand strategy for the recruiting purposes, right? But we literally send it out every single time before first, the, the first interview begins after the discovery. And, uh, and every time I get those comments. People want to feel cool. Totally. About about where they work 100%. and what they're about. They want to put. They want to slip on a jacket and be like, "This is sick," or yeah. put on a hat and be like, "This is cool. This yeah. looks good. I feel good. I'm representing a, a, an organization that I take pride in." And and I think so. I, I think there's a huge underlying overlooked piece here in brands' ability to make you a better recruiter and an, and an attractor of, of top talent. Like, like your example just uh, just clarified. 100%. And, and for listeners, whether you realize it or not, you have a recruiting brand. You have a people brand, right? So people, I think entrepreneurs often realize that, yeah, like I've got a brand in the, in the, in the market's eye, in the mm-hmm. consumer's eye, but your brand also lives in the eye of the talent pool. Mm-hmm. And, and that's another super important reason. So we talked about, you know, business valuation, mm-hmm. important brand. If someone's going to buy your company one day, which will happen, whether it's in five years or when you go to retire, when you're older, uh, somebody is going to be looking at your brand at that point. There's a recruiting benefits. And one other interesting one that I also want to want to put forward that I've really noticed is when it comes to high level strategic partners that you're going to work with, right. whether it's a huge construction company in your market or, or anything like that, uh, you go, moving forward and being looked at with a really powerful brand is a totally different situation than approaching companies way bigger than yours for any type of partnership um, with a super shitty brand. Totally yeah. different ballgame. Yeah, yeah, and we're always designing brands. We're not designing a brand for today. We're brand designing powerful brands for tomorrow. Totally. So we, we, want, we want the brands that we develop to fill the shoes that they're going to become. Of tomorrow. It's something yeah. you can grow into. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. when somebody comes to the, their website for the first time, like, wow, these guys are really professional. They're like really legit. And you are, you're just like smaller at the time. <laughs> yeah. Where are you going to be yeah. in, in 10 years from now? You're going to be even that much bigger. Like you're punching 100%. above your weight for a couple of years because yeah. you've got this sick logo, sick graphic design, amazing color palettes. Like the aesthetic is there and you're still like a... Yeah. Two or three million dollar company. You're, you're talking about like your conversation with Chip Wilson and Lululemon way back in the day, right? You're talking when he was living in like a little one bedroom apartment. And, and what, what, what did he say again? I want to do what? When we, I started working with Chip before he started Lululemon, Chip Wilson. And at the time when he started Lululemon, he was living in a one bedroom apartment, had two boys. And he's like, Noel, I want Lululemon to be as big as Nike. Right. But the brand that you would have built if you said, ah, this could be another like yoga mat brand would yeah, have been totally would have been, different. It would have been completely different. Right. So it's, it's so important to think about like, what are your goals and then how are we going to build a brand that gets you there? Totally. Um, yeah. So v- very interesting. Other, so, um, other benefits other than just strong brand advice, the consumer, the recruiting piece, building actual value into an eventual sale one day. And also, uh, this strategic partnership piece. Like I know for a fact when we, we've, connect with very large organizations, uh, they wouldn't talk to us if we don't have the brand presence that we do. No chance. So, yeah. yeah. So Noel, tell me this. Um, you guys have a really cool process. I've been to it through it now um, thoroughly with Breakthrough Academy and at the Contractor Revolution, you guys built all these brands. Um, what is it? What does that process look like as you go create something as strong as 1-800-GOT-JUNK, You Move Me, Breakthrough Academy? Mm-hmm. How do you birth one of these powerful brands? Yeah, so we definitely have a process. 1-800-GOT-JUNK was before us, like the initial brand, but we did tweak the brand and, and do a lot of work with them to this day. Uh, but we have a, a really solid process. So the first step is always, what are your goals? Right. Understanding where you want to be. And as soon as we know where you want to be, we can build a roadmap to get there. The next thing we do is we do a really robust brand strategy, mm-hmm. which is, it's, 
it's basically our, it is our roadmap. We really come to understand what is the company's tone of voice. We always think of a company like a person. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what is their tone of voice? What's their brand personality? If you were to meet this brand, what would that interaction be like? Could you trust this person? Are they funny? Are they serious? You know, w what are they like? That's the first half of the brand strategy. The second half of the brand strategy is really doing a deep dive into who's your ideal target market. Mm -hmm. So what are their values and beliefs? How do they like to be spoken to? What are the brands do they buy into? Why do they buy into those brands? Right. Do they go to Starbucks or do they go to Tim Hortons? Right. Right. And once we have that fleshed out, the brand strategy part, basically it's like two people. You have a lot of things that are in common and then you have things that are kind of on the fringe. Mm. We build the brand for all the things that are in and common. And, and when you say the, the two sides, that's like the, the business founder and the customer, right? Yeah, it's like the business, yeah. like the company, and then their ideal target right. market. So you're looking for the common traits, the common values that those, that bring two, you together. That those two organisms yeah. share. Yeah, so that way we don't end up having this lifted, chromed out pickup <laughs> truck with tribal tattoos because the owner loves it. Right. right. We have this brand that he loves tribal tattoos, but his brand is kind of edgy, but in a way that my mom's going to love it too because he serves a lot of moms totally or whatever right. it is right so yeah and, and i can tell you like as 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 the the business leader that have has gone through that process with freebird um it's this is a pretty intensive piece right like we spent a lot of time really like thinking through this um but again like there's so many benefits to it like you know for example we send this out to every single qualified recruit but um it made the rest of the branding process so easy it's not something mm -hmm. to to skip over this yeah. this deep initial thought that needs to go into this. What, what happened? So after this brand strategy piece, what's kind of the next step in this process? Well, the brand strategy, once it's done is cool. Cause you can give it to new employees or new potential hires. You can give it to someone doing your social media. You can give it to a PR team. You can give it to the person answering the phones. Mm -hmm. You can tell your whole team about it. The nice thing with the strategy is as a business grows, the owner can't be the one doing everything. So he's able to, to give this to people and go, totally. Hey, this is who we are. This is who we be. This is how we act. This, this is us. Yeah, yeah. So live within this. And if you get out of that, then you're, you're no in the good. wrong place. Once the strategy is done, there's usually a logo redesign where we design a logo from scratch. And the first thing we do and why this stage is really important is we do a bunch of research into other logos, mm. not competitor logos. We just find a, ton of different logos that both our ideal target market is going to love and that our client loves. And we'll find hundreds and hundreds of them. You don't need to find that many, but you, you need to find a lot because mm -hmm. often what happens is the client will send us 40 logos that they love and one's a BMW logo and one's, you know, a pit bull or just some random stuff. And then, and then they're like, oh, I don't actually like the BMW logo. I just like driving my BMW. Right. Mm. So it's really trying to narrow things down in that stage so we un come to understand what kind of icons do we like what kind of typography do we like what are some of the basic rules that as a team we can all agree that if our logo had these similar characteristics we're going to be in a good spot mm -hmm. and that saves you hiring a graphic designer to come up with a logo and they're going to spend days working on a script logo but you just don't like script mm -hmm. or you know there's, there's a set of rules that you can kind of play within Totally. And then from there, we design a logo. And the logo is, you know, this amazing mark that's, you know, clean and... Simple. Simple. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. usually, it, you know, like the logo behind us. It's, it's simple, but at the same time, there's a lot of story to it. Yeah, totally. Um, and a logo on its own is funny because a logo, like a Nike swoosh or a Starbucks logo on its own is nothing. If you had never seen it before, it means nothing. So the next stage is where do we bring the brand to life? Right. And it's, we call it the brand creation stage. So once again, we'll go out, do a bunch of research, find a whole bunch of creative styles, uh, typography, image with type. Um, so you're thinking through where it's going to live, right? Yeah, we're thinking about where it's going to live and how it's going to look. And then once again, we get all the key stakeholders to collectively agree that these few images really represent where we want to be as a brand. Totally. We're not, and then... Sorry, Benji. Oh, I'm just going to say, like, just on that point, I, I want to um, speak really c concretely and use examples here. Like, in the realm of a, of a contract, like, where where might their logos live, right? Like, we can, you can think of a website, a T-shirt, 
a ball cap, ball cap wrapped around a vehicle, cards, a trade show booth, door hangers. So you're you're literally like taking the logo that you've built in its early stages, and you're you're iterating it, or you're representing it in all these different environments yeah. to make sure to make sure. Hey, does this look good in a ball cap, or does it look kind of a bit wonky here yeah, in this? Is it in this yeah, it's yeah. super busy. Yeah. It's not even going to be recognizable. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you one interesting experience I had a number of years back with this. If you remember, you guys, um, so O2E and Brian Scudmore bought uh, Wow one day. And it had it was already existing in some small yeah. form by some pretty crappy brand, to be honest. Um, and I remember seeing that initial brand book. What do you guys call that again? The where you bring it? It's to our life, brand the, creation guide. The brand so. creation guide. Yeah. And I remember someone showed that to me, and I was like, "Wow, this looks incredible!" And this was a painting company, right? You listeners can check it out. Wow, one day painting, very well branded, and um, and it was so cool because all those assets that you're talking about, Benji, like you saw it on everything from these little uh, coasters that they'll leave a customer mm-hmm. with with a thank you note to uh, to the uh, Mercedes Sprinter like wraps mm-hmm. uh, to the paint uh, little uh, cut cans that they that they do cut lines out of um, to go coffee mugs to go yeah, coffee mugs everywhere. the uh, they have the estimators wear like a polo and a vest all those things and it was so happy it was so there's a real emotional connection to it i was like wow this brand is so cool yeah and the funny thing with that is we in the brand creation stage we bring the brand to life using jpeg images but we'll mock together what the brand's going to look like in every single touch point over the next 10 years totally we'll show you what it's going to look like a trade show booth yard signs door hangers uniforms at this point nothing's been spent on producing anything right but you're able to look at it as, you know, all the key stakeholders in your company can look through it, look through every page, understand, oh, yeah, it's, our website's going to look amazing on mobile. Yeah, mm. It's going to make a great ball cap. Mm-hmm. It's going to look awesome on every single touch point looks amazing. Once that gets checked off, that's when we start bringing the brand to life. Totally. I'll just use an example. I mean, with this Contract Revolution logo behind us, which which Noel and his team built for us, I mean, I remember we were looking at other logos that I liked more, and you were like, no, 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 dude. Like, they're going to look at this. I was a little thumbnail within the podcast app. Yeah, you need to understand the context. And I was like, oh, right. It doesn't yeah. matter that I think this is going to look better on a T-shirt. Like, 99% of the times people are going to look at it, it's in this very, very specific environment and maybe a few others. But I, I just think that that is a really interesting piece that maybe people don't consider. It's like, this is going to exist in different settings and we need to make sure that it looks good in those different settings before saying, yeah, let's go ahead and order yeah. a thousand t-shirts or a, you yeah. know, a bajillion Yeti mugs or whatever. So yeah, it has to look amazing everywhere. Every everywhere, touch yeah. point, it has to look yeah. perfect. Yeah. And, and I think that our contracting industry is, is kind of interesting and complex from that perspective because we don't, you know, the business doesn't just live in the digital world. It lives on the side of the moving truck, the brand is on the moving boxes. You know, yeah. using the example of a moving company, it's it's on the mugs that you'll leave the big kind of review request and thank you note at the end with a customer, or like you leave them with a plant and yeah. it's on the little yeah. pots. It, it, it's it, it, I'm just kind no, of going around stuff, but it's, it's everywhere. More, more more than other more like more. Uh, I don't know what the word is, more modern businesses that are maybe more digitally based or online. They really exist in cyberspace with contractors. There's a whole bunch of uh, moments where you can reach out and touch the brand in physical space. Yeah. Totally. Right? Like, so that that's something to consider about our members and their logos and their names and how they decide to do this stuff. That's where this stuff exists to a degree way more than many 100%. other businesses out there today. 100%, right? Like if, if your estimators, mini blows by on the highway at 100 kilometers an hour, is someone going to be able to recognize it in half a second yeah. or recognize that brand, right? So it's, it's very complex. So Noel, this process is pretty in-depth. I mean, I've been through it with you guys. It's, it's certainly a lot of work. I would liken it to spinning up a big heavy flywheel because it's a ton of work at the beginning until the brand really starts rolling. It's very front heavy to yeah. think through these things. Um, who is this process for? And tell me, who is it not for? Yeah, so... If- Having an, a powerful brand is important for anybody. Well, I'll start with who it's not important for. If you're a one-man show or if you're just one guy with a really small team and if you're super personable and if you get all of your work via referrals mm-hmm. and you're able to be the person that's always talking to the customer, then maybe a per- powerful brand is not important. Like for that guy, it's overkill. Or for that, for that, guy, for that woman, it's maybe, overkill. Because you can represent yeah. the brand personally. Yeah. If your goal is to grow that company beyond you or to sell it one day Mm -hmm. or to have a bunch of teams working in various locations, 
that's where it starts to become really important because you're not going to be able to be the person that's at every touch point. Yeah. Or if somebody's going to three different websites mm-hmm. to have a look and see who they're going to use. Right. Or if they're, maybe it's a company and they're going to shortlist to three, but they've already looked at 50. Yeah. 100%. So how do you rise to the top? How does your company be the one that is like, these guys are the most trusted out of all of them. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to pay a premium for that. Because I know when they come to my house or to my yard, they're not going to steal my stuff. They're not going to ruin everything. They're not going to smell like booze. They're going to be this respectable, great company. And you've done all that before they've even met you the first time. Yeah. 100%. Hundred percent. So it's it, it's someone where where you see the value in investing long term into your brand. And Benji, I know you and I talk about this this quite a bit, right? We we see this in the contracting space. There's certain areas of the business you call it like parts of the P and L mm-hmm. that uh, contractors, even really smart contractor entrepreneurs, heavily underinvest in, like right. bookkeeping and accounting and basic legal structures. And I put brand right up there with those. Is people massively underestimate the need to invest properly into brand and they're underspending yeah. on that and they're completely underspending so look mm-hmm. at for listeners open up your PL, look into quickbooks in the last three years how much have you spent in brand development and think about all the activities you do marketing sales production all this stuff you're constantly investing in a brand mm-hmm. are you investing all that time and energy into a shitty brand yeah right and i'll, I'll tell you a funny story on this so um i realized after we created our initial brand which i think a lot of companies have to do because you don't know who you are really at the beginning you have to start somewhere you and, need and a logo and a name yeah and, and it's fine to yeah, start you, there you, you, yeah you piece and, it together and you spend a year a couple of years figuring out like you know it's like a young teenager you're asking like you're like who am i like who are we right and, and you have to everyone has to go through that you can't i don't think you can create an extraordinary brand from your experience because you don't even know no, who you are yourself you can't. So anyway, you start with your kind of intern brand, but then at that point I was like, okay, well, now we're doing this for real. And I remember, you know, one brand I really respected was Brian's, you know, you move me and, and wow, one day and, and, uh, painting and, and what in our junk. And I called Brian and I was like, Hey, who is the best brand guy? And he's like, don't even like think about this. The guy you got to call his name is Noel. Here's his son. And I remember calling him. I don't know if you remember this conversation. My first call to you picked up on your cell phone. And I said, hey, Noel, um, my name's Igor. I run this company. And I think we could we could use a few tweaks to our website, right? <laughs> Thinking it's going to be a couple thousand bucks. We'll spend a couple days and, and, and our new brand will be awesome. And so, you know, a year and a half later and, and a huge budget later, um, I think we, we've done some really cool stuff. Um, but it, it is a serious investment, right? And and I think an interesting thing to unpack for listeners is even though it's time intensive, even though it is very expensive, why is it a great investment? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, like if you're going to a trade show and spending on flights and hotels and banners and if you're wrapping a vehicle and then you're going to get five more vehicles because you're growing, you're going to wrap those as well it costs just as much to make something mm-hmm. awesome as it does to make something ghetto. So you're, 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 it's kind of the same anyways. You're spending right. the money. You might as well make it look good. And also at some point, especially if your goal is to exit and sell the company, at some point you're going to have to have a really cool looking company. You'll and have to, yeah. You'll have to. Or somebody's going to buy it. Just like when you buy an apartment that's super shabby, but you're just going to renovate it. Somebody so might like buy your company. Baseboards are falling off, yeah. paints so crap. Somebody yeah. might buy your company and then just rebrand it themselves because they know they can make it so much better right away. Totally. But if you can and do they'll that, buy it at a discount because of sure. that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, I, th- that's very much the headspace that I look at any brand related initiatives, whether it's as simple as like we're making a PDF as a flyer or big stuff like the brand strategy. Um, Benji, we're talking about your reno, right? Like you're going to spend, let's say, you're like, okay, well, I'm going to spend $50,000 in this kitchen. That's not money down the drain. That's no. not like a crazy party weekend in Miami. Those are, um, that's money that's going into the actual asset value. Totally. And I look at it the same way as brand, right? So if you're going to invest $100,000 or $10,000 for that matter, it doesn't matter. The principle is the same into brand. Um, that's not money that you're act, that you're just spending. No. That That's going into no. the asset value, not just one-to-one, but coming back in dividends Long term, yeah. Dividends long term, year to year, you're going to do better, and then and then the cash out at the end is that much better yeah. as well because that's there. I I like to share a couple of thoughts on this. This like you mentioned, flywheel mm-hmm. effect. It's a it's a long term play. It's you know you spend some money now, you do some work now, and the benefits are actually not going to be immediate. That's maybe something we we should share. 
with listeners. You don't invest in brand and then tomorrow the phone is ringing off so the hook. Big just, heavy just flywheel what, takes I just time. I want to say that. Yeah, that doesn't happen that quickly. It could though. Because when, when we rebranded Wow One Day Painting, we had done this brand creation book. Nothing was actually done. It was just this multi-page book. We showed what the van was going to look right. like, the uniforms. So they presented that. I presented with Brian to a bunch of possible franchisees. And I believe they launched with 27 franchises on day one. And they wow. didn't have a single vehicle wrapped. Hmm. Right. It was like, they, but they, they were able to understand the vision of it. So the goal of branding isn't just to, when I sell the company, I'm going to make more money. The goal of, of rebranding and having new vehicles is you're going to start seeing results right away because people are going to start calling you. being like, oh, I saw your truck go by. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, you, you guys seem respectful. Hey, I saw you guys working in the neighbor's place. I like, you guys look pretty cool. Let's let's work together. Like yeah. like like in the example of one eight hundred got junk. They had vehicles out there driving. They had a fleet driving around, but they were just blank. There wasn't anything on them. And then and then the the brand went on the vehicles, and all of a sudden, poof. Well, no, I don't know. One eight hundred got junk's a bit of a different story because Brian Scudamer started that way before I started working with him, and he was in the back of a pickup truck. Oh, you're talking about you move me now. Sorry, th- no, I was talking about wow, uh, one, wow day. one day painting. Wow one day. So wow right. one day painting had a, they had a brand. They were a, they were a. But they got acquired by O2E Brands or you know, be, joined the family. Yeah. And so they did have a brand, but they didn't present the old brand mm-hmm. to franchise partners. Mm-hmm. They presented the new brand, like what the brand is going to be. Mm-hmm. Totally. I, I just, I, to, to this flywheel comment, I, it, it absolutely can have short-term effects. I, I shouldn't have said it that way where it's like you have to invest now and it's going to do nothing immediately. But it, it does it does compound in a way. And I, and so, so my experience... Um, you know, I, I do a lot of work with Breakthrough Academy on, on the front end, doing like a lot of marketing and sales. And I've been, you know, at this four years, brought in a few hundred members at this point. And I can tell you the difference in tone between the conversation four years ago mm-hmm. to now. Okay. So four years ago was, who are you guys? What what do you do? How old are you? Like, what how, what is this about? I don't really get it. Right. And you're, and I'm sweating bullets working my ass off to get like just barely enough deals through the you know to to not even hit quota like it was a grind and and it's you know business is hard it's not it's not all sunshine and rainbows now but what i will say in the context of selling breakthrough academy it's totally different and it's taken a while but now it's now it's to a place we've gone through the rebrand with you we do deliver an exceptional product the word has gotten out we have amazing referrals now it's you know, I, I like my buddy told you about you and I've, I've checked you out online. Like just, I got a couple questions, but we're good. Totally. That, yeah. That's, that's the tone. That's the energy. Yeah. And that's going back to a question we asked earlier. What does it feel like to, to have brand traction? That's what it's felt like for me. And it's really cool. And it gets better every month. That's the totally. thing. It just yeah. keeps going. Now it's like the, you know, that it's a two hour call to an hour and a half to a one hour. Like one day it could just be, a, there, you know, you just sign up. People are ready to go. It's very, very um, compounding. It builds momentum. And, yeah. and I think that's a, a really neat experience to be a part of. And for listeners, if you want to kind of check out some of these brands that, that we're referring to, I think it's it's really worthwhile. Like pop open on uh, the website on, on your phone or ideally on your computer, but check out uh, You Move Me as a brand, right? And think about if you were moving check out the the connection that you have to that very quickly. Uh, check out Shack Shine, mm. right? Yeah, Shack Shine's a good one. Um, yeah. Check out Wow One Day. Just Google it. Wow um, One Day Painting. Yeah, yeah wow, wow One Day Painting. Um, really powerful brands and you can see the effect that, that it has on your first connection to it on the website. Yeah. So so that that's cool. Awesome. Um, I had a question here on this. So we, we've, we've been talking about, you know, brand strategy, the creation process that you go through. And I, and I want to ask this question for listeners who are hearing this going, man, I totally buy into this conversation. I totally get where they're going with this, but I'm, you know what, I'm not at a place yet where I can spend 50,000 or a hundred thousand dollars or, or, or even less than that. Like they're just, they're, they're starting out and they, they want to have a strong brand, but they, they're just not able to do the full, the whole enchilada. We'll say, are, is there like a cheap and cheerful version of this? Are there quick and dirty, like tips that you could advise someone in that situation to go about making some improvements, but not blowing the bank? Yeah. So when you come to Freebird agency, we're more like an upper end BMW or Ford Raptor. Yeah. We're not, we're not the least expensive not players in town. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there's definitely ways you can come up with something far better by just doing a little bit of work. Okay. So often when you hire a junior designer, they want to just put everything into it. They want to make it crazy. They want to prove a point. It's very busy. 
the key is to keep things really clean and really simple. Uh -huh. When you drive by, I want to know who you are. And I want to know what you do. I don't want to know everything you do. I just want to know one thing. Like, just like, what's that one thing you're the best in the world at? Um, and take some time to go and research a bunch of logos that you know you love and you also know that your ideal target market's going to love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That your employees are going to love. So like that process that we went through and we developed like the brand mood board and the logo mood board. Um, yeah. if, if someone needed to or wanted to, they can go do that that kind of research themselves, yeah, if, right? If I was doing it and I had no budget, I would go online and I'd find 10 amazing logos. Mm -hmm. Not for the brand, not a BMW logo, because I like driving BMWs. It's more like- the Actual brand itself. The, 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 look the visual. And, the look yeah. and the feel. Mm -hmm. Find 10 logos that are amazing. Doesn't even have to be in contracting. Definitely doesn't want to be in contracting because you're going to mm -hmm. be raced to the bottom. There's not many guys doing a great <laughs> job. <laughs> right? There's, like, people don't put a lot of effort into it yeah. in this world at this point. But as soon as people start putting effort into brand, right. everyone's going to have to jump on board. Because as soon as one person does it, it elevates totally. the game. And that's why Brian Scudamore's companies do so well. Right. Um, so yeah, find 10 images that are amazing and then give that to your junior designer and say, hey, my logo wants to live in this world. I don't want to copy any of this, but it needs to look at home when right. I put it into these. This so if I put it in one... PDF page with all those 10 logos, yeah. it's got to fit in. It's got to fit in. Right. And then also think about who's your ideal target market and what brands do they buy into? Totally. And then find 10 of those logos and then put your logo into those brands and be like, right. oh, does it fit in with their Starbucks and their, mm -hmm. you know, Sleeman's beer, whatever it is they live in. Right. Make sure it also feels kind of at home there as well. Totally. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. We really want them to be like, when, when your target market sees your brand for the first time, it's, Trust is, is built through understanding. Like if somebody totally understands it, that's what you're seeing now, Benji, with, with your sales process at BTA, is people trust the brand because they're able to see exactly what you do and how you do it before they even talk to you. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's not this like scary factor. Um, so yeah, and we'll also with a website, say if I didn't have a lot of money to spend on a website, I would go and find 10 websites that were amazing and I'd tell a junior web developer, I, I like this navigation because it's super clean. I like this typography because it's really clean mm -hmm. and it's like not saying too much. Like just find things you like and then have teams work within those set of rules. Right. What, what's that What's that saying, Noel? I think it's like like good artists copy, great artists steal. Does that kind of apply to the world of brand? <laughs> I don't think it's, yeah, I don't think it's stealing because you don't want it to look like anybody else's. We just mm -hmm. want it to feel it. Emulate. Yeah, yeah, it's like... like it's like when you, you've got your five best friends and you put them all in a room yeah. and then you have somebody that's not even a friend at all. Like that person might stand out because they don't have the cool mustache or the same <laughs> shoes or whatever it is. You want your brand to feel really at home. Okay, cool. It's like a person. At the end of the day, everything's got to have that personality. Yeah. So like when we, when we did this logo, we, we, like we looked at, okay, what, what, do our, what does our audience like? They really like steel chainsaws. They really like Ford trucks they really like these brands of beer they really like this kind of coffee they yeah. love these restaurants these are things we know from market research and we we put this up next to those it fits like yeah. right in it feels totally at home yeah exactly yeah. and same process for the breakthrough academy totally we, we went through the whole process and you can do it yourself yeah. we've even built an online tool like an online portal tool that people can literally go onto our website log in and go through each step mm -hmm. themselves without having to, to spend a ton. Cool. Right. Awesome. Um, guys, we talked about a lot of really, really cool stuff. Um, just a, as we wrap up, uh, I want to, I want to leave listeners with one thing and then I'd like to have asked Noel one final question, but, um, I think just as we close one of the most powerful elements of our conversation so far, at least for me has been this piece around investment. Um, just understand everything you do, you're constantly investing in a brand make it a good one. And even what might seem like a large uh, dollar spend or time spend to kind of put a really great brand together, it is going to pay back in dividends uh, in the years to come. And, and then in long term, don't kind of build a nice house on a really shitty foundation. Exactly. Right? And Bri Brian Scudamore, you know, I think they're, they're close to $500 million a year now. And he will say brand is everything. Totally. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, don't invest in a shitty foundation. Um, so Noel, as I close it off, I got one final question for you. Uh, let's keep it really, really simple here. Uh, as you design brands, what are two principles that you always stick to when creating a great brand? 
And what are two things that are absolute no-nos stay away from all the time? Okay. So yeah, we, we definitely, we want to keep things simple enough that people can easily understand it. So mm-hmm. we can, we can build up the trust. We want it so that people can easily see the name of the company and have an understanding of what we do. Mm. And we want it to stand apart in a way. So we don't look to the competitors for inspiration for how to build our brand. Mm. We look to our inspirations and our customers' inspirations to mm-hmm. build a brand. So it's got to be different than what you typically see in the marketplace. And it's got to communicate what you do very clearly. Yeah. And, and if you do 18 different things, they're not all on the side of the truck. No, no, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing I loved was Shack Shine, right? So you've got this combination of window cleaning, gutter cleaning, pressure washing, yeah. right? Uh, that combo of services typically hadn't had a name, but people know how to detail their car. So how's detailing? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. V- very cool. It's brilliant. And what, what are two like really big no-nos when creating a brand? I think the biggest thing I see, especially with contractors, is they kind of just do what they love. So their logo is something that they think is super cool, but they're not thinking about their target audience. Mm -hmm. Right. And often maybe you can't read it. The Mm. font's too stylized or too squished together. It drives by and you're like, you don't even know what it is. You kind of got to look, really think about it. And you can be unique and still have it so it's clear and understandable. Totally. The next thing is, definitely with contractors more than anybody is often these guys will do, you know, 10 or 15 different things and all 10 or 15 are on the side of the truck. And then there's a big phone number and a big URL and it drives by and like, this guy does a lot of stuff. I don't know what he does and I don't even know who it is because I didn't see the logo. So I think it's really important just to keep it to one, one thing's really important. Yeah. And then if the name of your company and if you have a website that has any SEO, then if you're going to put the phone number in the URL, have it small on the side of the door. So if somebody walking by, they can just take their phone and take a picture of it. Right. But it doesn't need to be huge. Totally. Because when you're driving, you know, down the street, no one's going to pay attention. Yeah. Amazing. No, um, tell us, tell us quick, just like very brief, a bit about Freebird and where people can find, find you. Yeah. So we're, we're, uh, we're a specialty brand building company. We do uh, everything from name development through to brand creation, web development, advertising, like 1-800-GOT-JUNK, all their ads through North America, pretty mm-hmm. much, um, their billboard ads. Uh, we do a little bit of everything, but we're really, really, really good at branding and yeah. building powerful brands and totally. understanding, like, it's easy to have a lo- like a pretty picture, and all my logos are pretty picture, but it, it's not enough to have a pretty picture if you, what you need to do is build a powerful brand that creates really strong emotional connections and then drives business. 100%. Yeah. Um, and then if they want to find us, you can check out our website. It's freebirdagency.com. And yeah. Awesome. Just, that's it. And if someone uh, is pretty serious about, about brand stuff, can they shoot you an email? Definitely. Yeah. Just send an email through the company. It'll go to me and I'll get back to you as, as quickly as possible. Yeah. I love I loved talking brand. Amazing. I know you do. It was clear from our, from, from our first phone call and I can personally attest to it now having kind of done two uh, brand braille builds with Freebird. Um, if, if you are serious about this and, and you are serious about scaling your company and building long-term value into it, and you understand the importance in the foundation of brand and you want to work with the best, uh, Freebird's it. So Noel, awesome. thank you so thank much you. For, uh, for having us on. Hey, if you enjoyed this show, hit that subscribe button. It's what allows us to produce more awesome content for you totally for free.